Hi everybody, welcome to the third and final vodcast on our look at cell reproduction. Um, from the last one we had left off talking about a lot of different new terms and kind of putting, <laughs> no pun intended, all of our eggs in a basket here, um, trying to figure out um, what we call different things, all so that we can get ready for this one. So if you're still feeling a little shaky on the terms, you know, go back kind of look at it again, and I'm gonna be using them a lot through this one too. So the more we work with them, the better we'll get at it. Um, so we left getting ourselves ready to wonder how do cells get to that proper chromosome number, meaning proper that half chromosome count. How do we ensure that a cell only takes one half of every homologous pair to make the gamete? and that process is called meiosis. Um, it's our gamete formation in organs. Um, don't get confused, mitosis, I know they sound very similar, okay? So we'll be looking at, and especially looking at in the lab, the differences between these two processes. So gametes, we know they have a reduced chromosome count. So the question is, why? And we looked at this last time the big deal, why do we have to have a reduced chromosome count? Well, because two gametes fuse together to make the new organism. And if I don't reduce that chromosome count and it's still diploid, so for example, it's still 46 in humans, and it fuses with an egg um, or another gamete from another human that's got 46 chromosomes, that new organism, the chromosome count isn't 46, it's 92. And every time we're gonna get additional chromosomes and buildup of chromosomes. And that's gonna screw up the instruction manual and screw up the ability for us to create um, all of the things we need to, to build that organism. So that's really, really important. So it's a reduction process. Um, so these cells that divide, once they become the gamete, that's it, they're done. There's no more division after that. So it is similar to mitosis but different all at the same time, so we'll, we'll work our way through it. What makes it different than mitosis is that mitosis has a single division, right? Here's mitosis, right? One cell divides into two. That's it. One division process, one cell, split. We've looked at that, we've looked at them in the lab. Cool. In meiosis, we have two divisions, and at the end of that second division, we are left with haploid chromosome counts in each of the daughter cells, which are our gametes. So we start with our diploid number. There's a division process that initially, in the first division process, does reduce the chromosome count. And then there's another one here, and I'm gonna explain what that's all about here in a second. And again, remember, N is the term we use, that variable we use to describe a haploid cell. 2N is diploid, all right? I'm gonna walk you through the steps. Meiosis only occurs in the gonads. The gonads are the reproductive organs. So in females, that's the ovaries. In males, those are the testes. Um, the gonad cells, those initial cells, are diploid. Okay? So some of those cells are going to be responsible for entering meiosis. They're the only cells in our body that do this. All right. So if you're with me so far, meiosis, reduction process of chromosomes, it's a two-step, two-division process. DNA is gonna replicate, just like it does in mitosis, we're gonna have the S phase of the cell cycle still going on, all right? DNA replication occurs, and this is gonna happen before we enter mitosis, or meiosis. Each chromosome now is composed of two chromatids identical to each other joined at the centromere. All that means on all a chromatid is, and don't stress the difference, honestly. It's just, it means it's a replicated chromosome. So my chromosome has replicated, and they get stuck together at this point on the chromosome called a centromere, and that just holds them together. These are a replicated chromosome. One chromosome, it's just doubled up. After we enter meiosis, that's it. That's the only time the DNA is going to replicate. No more replication occurs. By the time we finish the first division, we have already reduced the chromosome count. So let me show you how it works. 
prophase one. Okay, this is the, here we go, before we actually, um, we have the first division. So just like, um, you know, in mitosis, in prophase, nucleus, we're gonna lose the nucleus. See all the holes over here that are in the nucleus here? It's starting to get all scrambled and holy. The chromosomes condense, okay, but they form a foursome, okay? This foursome is called a tetrad, all right? And that tetrad is the homologous pair. So the homologous pair pairs up, and I would have something like this. So here's my replicated chromosome of two. They're just attached. And then it's going to attach to its homolog. I'm going to color it in just so you can tell the difference. So then it attaches to its homolog. And they're all like pinched in, right? So it's like if I took four things and I pinched them together in the middle, squeezed them right in. So there's all my chromatids. One, two, three, four. One chromosome, other chromosome. So it's really only two chromosomes. They're just, it's the chromosome times two. One chromosome times two. Then in metaphase, the homologous pair lines up down the middle. See that? My homologous pair lines up down the center. Okay, let me show you what my mitosis is. The difference in that in mitosis is that instead of the homologous pair lining up, each chromosome lines up down the middle, and then that duplicated chromosome splits. Here, the pair lines up, and we do this great lab called the Twizzler lab, where you will actually get to manipulate chromosomes through this process. Then in anaphase one, the pair splits. Now, if my pair splits and I no longer have a diploid count, right? If I take my pair and I separate my pairs, that means my new cells at the end in telophase are now haploid. This is still, even though it's replicated, it's one chromosome, one chromosome, one chromosome, one chromosome, okay? Where over here, I had my one, all in one cell, one, two, three, four chromosomes. So here, my diploid count, 2n equals four, but by the end of this, I now am haploid. So just, to reiterate what, so just to reiterate what goes on in the second division, and above here what's really cool is here's some real cells. Already we've had the first division, this is meiosis two, okay? Earlier I showed you the meiosis one slide, so here's the second part, okay? The second part is, okay, now that I have no, okay, the two new cells here, no DNA replication occurs, okay? chromosomes then each chromosome lines up this is where it reminds me a little bit of mitosis each one lines up down the equator and each chromosome or chromatid separates so that one goes that way that one goes that way and you can see here here's that cleavage furrow that's forming okay each one pulls and now at the end of telophase two I have a half Okay, so I start out haploid in meiosis two, I end haploid in meiosis two, okay? So we just have a doubled up chromosome, that chromosome separates, and I end up with four cells. Each of these are now gonna be called gametes. Just another way to look at it. The more I can, <laughs> more I can show you different ways, hopefully the more it'll, you know, start to make some sense. So germ cell, that's just the parent cell of a cell that's gonna become a gamete. And so here's my 2n number up here, right? My diploid count, in this case, 2n equals two. All right, so I only have one pair, all right? My chromosomes replicate. Here's my tetrad, okay? Tetrad pulls apart, I separate my homologous pairs, all right? And notice now I'm into the n category. Now because my homologous pair separated, I'm now haploid, n equals one. In this cell, I only have one chromosome, one chromosome. Now, this chromosome that's replicated splits, and I have my gametes, okay? So here's one parent, here's the other parent doing the same thing. So now what do the gametes do? The gametes then fertilize, and you get 
your new zygote. Okay, and there's going to be what would become the baby. And notice now my diploid count, my 2N count, has been restored. So no funkiness with chromosome numbers. So, so there you have it. The best way to help with your understanding of meiosis is to practice. Try some different um, diploid counts. Try a 2n equals 2, try a 2n equals 4, 2n equals 6, um, you know, to, to get some practice because honestly, what happens with one chromosome pair inside the cell is going to happen with every pair. And we are going to really look at this, we're going to practice with it, we're going to work with it in the classroom. And um, like I said, the Twizzler lab is a ton of fun and that's where we're going to actually manipulate um, chromosomes through the process so that you can really kind of dig down and get a better understanding of it. So hope you guys have a great night um, and take it easy and we'll catch you in class.